Right, well, Triumph was almost your first band or something, was it not? Yeah, no, I had some kid bands before that, and we were remarkably unsuccessful, like most bands are, and, you know, just trying to, like, success was measured in, can you get a job? Right. <laughs> so, I had a few can-get-a-job bands, but for the most part, it was, you know, not really getting rehired, and you guys are too loud, why don't you quit playing original music? Right and play cover songs and just just for for myself and for the audience. What era is this? What, what years are we talking? In the seventies. So, okay. Triumph starts in the early seventies, and uh, it was like uh, hard to explain other than I think all musicians are conditioned to failure, as I was. Okay, and uh, you know occasionally success flares up, and you don't know how to deal with success because you're conditioned to failure. So that becomes an opportunity that either freaks you out and you blow it. Or you somehow try to keep your head glued on and springboard forward. I think fortunately, I had just enough maturity to not react the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And it was instantaneous. When we played our first show, we, we came off after literally the first set. And we went backstage and we all looked at each other. And our eyes were the size of saucers. And we went, can you believe that? And it was just the reaction of the audience because... You know, whether it was, I mean, Mike's bands were more successful than mine or Rick. So, you know, Mike's bands were a little more professional. Okay. You know, but we used to tease each other about mm -hmm. our, our early bands. Like, we, you know, Rick had a band called General Mud. So, of course, we never let him live that one down. <laughs> right. Like we kept referring to General Mud, you know, <laughs> all through our career. You're going to be back in General Mud, Rick. And <laughs> Such a great name, General right. Mud. And, uh, but, but, you know, the, the reaction, it just, uh, it really was, it just kind of flipped us out. And we realized, okay, I don't know why that happened because, uh, you know, I'm still playing the way I played. You still play the way you play. And it was, a, but it was a palpable different oh, energy. Oh, no, no. Like the, the, the audience just moved forward towards the stage and, and they, uh, just the, the, the enthusiasm, you, you, you could touch it. It was tangible. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, I was used to the, oh, you know. Gaping mouth yawns, you know, I think outside to the lavatory or bartender's break, girlfriend ignoring or, you. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> and that's what that's how musicians grow up. They they all do. They mm -hmm. all start with that level of rejection from the audience and trying to warm the audience up. So uh, it was a it was an amazing moment, but it was it, it wasn't gradual with Triumph. It was instantaneous. So we only played in the in the clubs and schools and stuff for you know a short period of time and we were we were into playing small concerts by the next year and by the next year we were all concerts and we'd been over the border and we were headlining in america and we leapfrogged in another year we're, we're headlining arenas in america how did that trajectory how did that path open itself up to you so like was that something you guys did on your own or did somebody find you you know what I mean? Like, were, were you discovered or, did you, or were you the guys that just kind of said, no, let's, we have to push as much as possible? We, we just pushed. Uh, we, uh, I really, you know, credit watching what Rush did. They were just before us and they gave us a little bit of a feeling like, you know what? The, the, there's not a, you know, a, a wall at the 49th parallel. You know, mm -hmm. they were getting across the border and they were starting to get acceptance in america and that was the big thing and did us. you know them already like were you friends with those guys uh, yeah sort of okay. i mean locally we were on the same circuit right and, and so on but their managers were pretty generous to us with information mm -hmm. so you know ray and ray and vic would give us uh you know advice uh, this is what happened with rush and kind of and so we were able to gain a little bit of confidence from from that aspect but the other thing for me was when we went when we went across we got a fantastic law firm we had a fantastic uh, agent and we started to push out there and meet the u.s promoters and try to convince them that you know give us a shot mm -hmm. and uh you know america being more entrepreneurial than we tend to be up here they were giving us shots now up here in canada i got to credit you know michael cole and, and donald tarleton because they did the same thing they 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 suddenly went you know what these triumph guys are for real let's take them from coast to coast so it all just exploded really quickly. Okay. Talk to me about sort of the the rise and fall part of it. Was because you guys you guys came up through the eighties. Like a lot of the people a lot of the, the, the metal or rock band people that I talked to 
Um, I, I've heard the story of the groups that were just about to break as grunge came in, right? <laughs> that would have been a bad time. Right? Yeah. Like, like, I've heard that story over yeah. and over again. But you guys actually got to, to live sort of the rise of, of rock and roll through the 80s, right? Yeah, we did. And, and uh, you know, uh, the time that we finally, you know, just split up, it was, it was kind of like, uh, it was just kind of like, poof. Um, you know, a lot happened all at once. Right. You know, uh, for me, it was my father passed away, okay. which just completely knocked me off my horse. At the same time, uh, Rick had decided he wanted to go solo. So he was kind of like wanting to go in a different direction. Uh, you know, Mike was in between all this trying to, you know, keep, keep the thing rolling. But really, it was a time. It was just like, it had been so intense for 15 straight years. Yeah, because you guys, it wasn't overnight. Right? No. It's just... 15 years of touring. I mean, you know, like I have more air miles than I'll ever be able to <laughs> use up, if you know what I mean. Right. So I just, I always was more comfortable behind the scenes. Like before Triumph started, I had a sound company. Okay. And I kind of always wanted to get back to that. So that's why the studio just appealed to me so much and uh because the studio first came up during triumph right yes it, it grew we built this we built the first studio at metalworks for triumph it was a private studio and then we opened it up to tom cochran because he was a buddy and doug and the slugs because they were buddies with our engineer and, and you know it became a commercial studio and then eventually got of course much bigger was that that's... the intent when it opened or was it always no, no. just a just a jam space private kind of studio yeah. for triumph that that was the intent okay um, did the business side of it, was that a thing that was forced on you or was it a thing that just sort of naturally grew? <laughs> you mean the business of Triumph? Well, no, the business of, well, actually either or, cause I don't know, did you, were, how involved in the business side of, of Triumph were you? Very much. Um, yeah? yeah, we, we had managers only for a brief period when okay. we started, uh, the first year or so. And, uh, Mike had a lot of experience in the record industry before Triumph started. He was, um, Mike was a little more knowledgeable than Rick and I. He, he's, he had started before we had, he was working for a record label. You know, I was working, I had a sound business. And uh, so we had an idea of what we wanted to do. And we were extremely hard headed about it too. I mean, we were determined to do things our way. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a good and a bad thing. You know, it made us very determined. At the same time, I'm sure we made some bad decisions for the band that maybe a, a manager would have counseled us to do something different. But I don't re I don't regret anything. Like, 15 we had years great, seems to work out. We had a great ride. And, right. and, and, and mostly, you know, it just seemed like we came up with an idea. We said, okay, this is going to make sense for us. And this is what we're going to do. And, you know, it, it just seemed like a really, really smooth ride and, and, until it ended. And I don't have any regrets because I wanted to be, after my father passed, you know, my mother was getting on in age. I wanted to be here for her. I didn't want to be, you know, in a hotel in Tuck the Yuck Duck. I wanted to be, you know, right here to make sure she was okay. And I wanted to be here for my children, raise them properly. So the timing actually was a blessing, I would say. Don't forget you can subscribe to our full audio episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you find your audio podcasts. The full episodes, highlights, and our live off-the-floor performance videos can be found at our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at The AVB Podcast. Of course, you'll find links to our incredible sponsors and this week's guest in the description below. The AVB Podcast is part of the Border City Network. Find more great content at BorderCityNetwork.com. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.